what's up everybody? Landon here with LMR.com. Uh, we have a little bit different video for you guys today. I'm out in the shop uh, with Scott Hubbard, our lead mechanic. For those of you that follow us, you've probably seen him on our YouTube videos. He helps us develop our parts, uh, help us install parts, and he fixes all of our broken stuff. Uh, what we're doing today, uh, we're just tinkering. Uh, we figured we'd bring you guys along for this. Uh, this is our 1992 Calypso hatchback. Uh, LX and uh, it's one of our mock-up cars. We use this for test fitting parts. We use this for developing parts uh, And it's a really good car for us and it serves uh, a good purpose for that. Uh, we're gonna put the Godzilla in this thing We actually uh, purchased a K member. We're gonna take the factory setup out of this car K member and the Godzilla in place uh, We're also gonna put a transmission on the on this engine too That way you guys can see what's going on there and show you some close-ups of you know where it's sitting in the engine bay between the frame rails and all that good stuff so Stay tuned. All right, so old school 302. This engine here is actually out of Uncle Ted's 85 ASC McLaren, uh, the car that Shannon uh, fully restored for Uncle Ted. Here's an F-150 Coyote engine we use for mock-up stuff. And then there's, there's what we want right here. There's the Godzilla. So we're gonna go ahead and roll this over near the car. We'll unbox our K-member, lay out all of our parts and assess what we have and go from there. What are you supposed to weigh it? Yeah, we can weigh it. I think I've already weighed it. It's like 500 and something pounds. I was going to say 500-something times. 500-something times, yeah, that too. 7.3 liter Godzilla sitting on the engine stand. Uh, we haven't done anything to it. We uh, took it out of the crate, put it on the stand. Right now, it's just kind of a, a shop ornament, I guess. We'll get our K-member, and we'll, uh, we'll get it unboxed. The Team Z K-member. So the driver's mount is on, and uh, Team Z actually gave you a little bit of some adjustment with the bolt holes, so you can get everything lined up uh, accordingly. So definitely not their first time building suspension components, and uh, this stuff's really nice. Really, really nice. Great 10.9 hardware, you know, their hammer tone finish. This is some good looking stuff. So that's that's the engine mount. That's, I mean, it bolts, washers, and uh, you torque it to spec. So we've got those on both sides, ready to roll. There's our K-member. I'm going to do that to you. Guess you're getting... Oh, thanks, Hubbard. <laughs> oh, wow, so it's got these little standoffs. You coming in from, uh, so head of bolt towards the front of the car, so front to back. <laughs> wow, oh, look at that. So you don't have a whole lot of this, right? No, we don't. Let me so, grab the camera and let me show you guys here real quick uh, so what, what we've noticed so far. Your engine angle. The minimal clearance here, but there is clearance. All right, so we're ready to tighten up some hardware. Um, I don't think we're gonna tighten it. So we're gonna leave it loose? Yeah, I've got it all the way bottomed out. I guess the nylon. All you don't way. think we'll have to remove any of our, uh, any of the manifolds? I guess we're gonna no, find out. No, it's nothing, nothing. All right, folks, so K member, it's uh, just loosely in place, just enough for us to you know, have some wiggle room to get up in the car. So what we're gonna do now, uh, we have a 4 r 70 w somewhere in the shop. Uh, we're gonna track it down and uh, transmission bolt it up, and then we'll start pulling apart the factory K member. All right, so what we're doing right now, uh, we're trying to track down our 4 r 70 w As most of you may know, or if you don't know, selling restoration and performance parts for 79 to present Mustang. Uh, we acquire quite the collection of parts. So Hubbard's on a mission. I think he's got it tracked down. And then we're gonna get this, it's actually on a pallet. Oh yeah, we got bonus struts with it. That's a good looking transmission. Hey, Lando's. That's mine. So what we're doing right now, um, engines within the cherry picker. Uh, we're actually using the factory installed hood bracket, which is nice to hold the chain or hold the engine. That, that bolt was hiding. It was hiding from it. So we've got tension on it. Get these bolts loose. tracking down some bolts to get our transmission secured to the back of the engine. Again, this is a 4R70W out of a 99 Mustang GT. And the cool thing about the Godzilla engine is that your bell housing bolt pattern 
that shares the same bolt pattern as a late model, 4.6 liter two valve, four valve, or 5.4 liter two valve, four valve, and even the Coyote. Uh, your four R70W out of one of those engines, or off of one of those engines, or one of those cars would work. Uh, 6R80, 10R80, uh, and I mean, I wouldn't see why, you know, a T56 with the accompanying bell has it wouldn't work either. Here's some close-ups of a K member. The exhaust manifold, I mean, maybe an inch at the rear, give or take, inch, inch and a quarter. Uh, an inch and a half, maybe even a little closer to two inches here at the front. A lot of working room here, I mean, to be expected with a tubular K member. And as far as weight's concerned, we didn't weigh the Team Z K member. Most of these weigh about the same, you know, give or take, plus or minus a few pounds or ounces, given whatever Team Z had to do to make it work for that particular engine. This is driver's side. A little bit more clearance here between the mounting front of the K member underneath the frame rail. We got it low as we can. So we're gonna take the transmission. It's gonna bolt up to that. You wanna take it off? Well, no, it'll make a mess. We just may have to stab it under the... We have to actually stall this thing down. Gotta get strong here. I don't know if these little low crate myrtles are up to the task. They win. Oh, wow. All right, check this out, fellas. Weight on the back of the, uh, the Godzilla engine. even has your dowels in place. So this is going to go. It's going to allow our course W to go right into. All right, what you need, Hubbard? A little weight right there. All right, a little weight on the back of the K number here. Get this aligned. All right, so what we're doing here, we're just getting some bolts started. Uh, you, we're going to use these as, as guides. Uh, to get it flush up in the back of the engine block. <laughs> so we don't have is that space. That was good, Hubber. <laughs> We're in the torque converter too. <laughs> yeah, torque converter went right in the uh, <laughs> right in the place. So. No spacer plate on this, guys. We're just bulking it up. Again, this is just for mock-up purposes. Uh, so don't beat us up in the comments too bad about, oh man, you forgot the spacer plate. We know this, trust us. Oh wow, does the dipstick even clear? Oh wow. Yeah, you can clock that a little bit. We're not completely on the down. There we go, there we go. All right, hook some controls up, put a drive shaft in it. Add some fuel. If only it was that easy. All right, so we just have about all of our bell housing bolts ready to go. So what we're doing now is we are going to take our mock-up Hydra Boost out of this car, and in its place is going a 93 Cobra-style booster. Uh, that one is a little bit larger, you know, than a regular GT uh, LX booster, but still, uh, for those of you guys that may be running uh, larger brakes and need the larger volume. Uh, brake booster. We're going to put this in the car and see if this Godzilla uh, does in fact clear the brake booster. And we're going to get this out of there. All the retaining nuts at the firewall so we can get the Hydra Boost assembly out of this car. And here it comes. In, in its place, 93 Cobra style booster. What do you think? You think it'll clear? We won't know until we find out, huh? I kind of like the fact that that is a 93 Cobra booster. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we may have to slot that hole. Huh? That way we, we have to slot that firewall hole. That's kind of the trick to get that thing in. Either that or you beat the hell out of your strut tower. You're saying we have to uh, elongate a hole? To yes. Get this in there? Yes. I had to do that on the Vortec car when we did the disc conversion on it for video. Really? All right, so. If you're gonna be upgrading to a 93 Cobra booster, uh, pay attention. You're gonna have to carefully do this on your car to get your booster um, to clear that strut tower. Of course, you know, it's kind of a car by car scenario. All right. Got a three cover booster going in. Oh, man. Good thing this is a mock up car. Vortec car, I just okay, slotted I see, those holes. I see, I see the top. Right. Top hole needs to be slotted as well. So we're gonna go ahead and slot that upper right hand hole, and that's the right hand hole when looking at the firewall from the front of the car. So that's your top right hole to the side. Thing is, they, they're gonna have a bracket back there. 
and you don't want to drill through that bracket. We don't have the bracket. So the booster's sitting in place. Hubbard will hop inside the car, uh, throw some washers on there to mimic the pedal assembly, and then just put some retaining nuts on there. That way we can hold the booster in place. All right, so there's the booster coming through the firewall. Again, no pedal assembly is in here. All right. All right, folks, so we're to the point of removing our factory Fox setup. Uh, that tool's really loud, so if you can't hear me, no. Nah. Uh, we're gonna take our factory Fox K member uh, out of the car, get it out of the way. I'm gonna help Hubbard do that. We got our pole jack underneath the control arm. Uh, we're gonna pull our lower control, our front lower control arm bolts. Castle nuts coming off of our outer tie rod. We'll smack the ear of the spindle and that will drop out. That rust is holding on. Oh yeah. Sometimes you've you seen get, that, huh? You gotta get the big old you know what hammer. So what you don't want to do is ding your spray dust okay, okay, shield, but, but it's all good. Yeah. That e easily straightens. Right, we'll do the same thing over here for the driver's side. Castle nut to come off. Wow, it's all that one up. came right out. All marked up. Definitely a mock-up car. Comes apart easy. So what we're doing here, again, control arm bolts are coming out. We've got our pole jack underneath the control arm, and whenever we get this last bolt out, we'll be able to bring the pole jack down, and that's gonna relieve our tension off of our spring so we can just swing this whole assembly out of the way. All right. All right, so control arm is removed from the K member here, and then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna ratchet strap this or bungee strap it out of the way. Okay, do it again on the other side, Hubbard. Got a little leaky steering rack here. I don't know if you guys can see that, dripping right on out, down from within the boot. That's a sign that it needs a rack. All right, and here comes the driver's side. Drop that control arm down. Lower control arm strut assembly, we'll get it tied out of the way. Uh, the rack's gonna stay on the car. So what we'll have to do now is remove our front K member to frame rail bolts. There's two per side. And there's also two back here uh, underneath the car, two per side, so, so four in total. Again, guys, mock-up car, this hardware, you know, it's not there. I mean, we typically don't have an engine in this thing, so that's why the stuff's not there. Okay, so there you go, Hubbard. That calf muscle is going to be right. So we got our transmission jack. Uh, it's about as high as it goes, so what we'll probably have to do, we'll just bring the car down a little on the lift. This is gonna help us situate the K-member. Uh, that way we don't have to sit there and kind of balance it with two people. Uh, we can let our the base of the transmission jack uh, kind of hold everything steady uh, while we pull the hardware. And then once it's free, you know, we can just lower this transmission jack and get the factory K-member out of the way. So a little trick that Scott Hubbard has come up with over the years is just insert a long extension or some sort of rod that's can slide through the holes for the control arm hardware. This will allow you to help hold the K member or manipulate it uh, whenever it's free because this thing isn't balanced. For you guys watching, if you didn't know this, there's a Hubbard trick for you. He's full of them. All right, so the front hardware is out. We have this one bolt back here, Hubbard. Just a random, just a random stray. 13 maybe? That's the last one. And then she's coming out. Okay, while well, Hubbard Remove that last bolt back here. I'm holding this bar to keep this K-member steady. That way it doesn't rock back and forth and fall off the back of that transmission jack. Oh, Hubbard, it's sliding, it's sliding, it's sliding. Oh, we forgot to take loose from the steering shaft. Don't forget the steering shaft. And the last oh, thing to remove is the pinch bolt on the rag joint for the steering shaft. That's a 12 point. Yeah. So now we can lower our transmission jack. I'm gonna hold this bar in place. Again, this is gonna keep it from rocking back and forth and falling. All right, Hubbard, I'm ready when you are. Oh, it's sliding. I'll leave my hammer over there. One of the guys, he need to reach out and let it come to him. <laughs> Factory Fox K member is out of the way. Look at all that room. 
All right, folks, so a quick change of scenery. I'm here in our main film studio where it's nice and quiet because it got a little loud out there in the shop area and I don't think you guys would have been able to hear me. So I'm in here shooting a quick wrap up with all the Godzilla stuff that we accomplished today. Hubbard and I, we were hard at work. Uh, we got the factory K-member out of the way. All the factory suspension stuff is gone uh, to make way, of course, for the Godzilla, the aftermarket K-member, and the 4R70W transmission, which we prepared all of that as well. So we're at a good stopping point for today. We're gonna come back tomorrow, which we'll probably have two separate videos, a day one and a day two. So just stay tuned for whatever we have. Hey, what's up, people? Day two with our Godzilla shenanigans. Uh, I am here in the studio real quick. I have to get a few tools first before I head out into the shop area. So if you haven't seen the first video or day one of all the Godzilla stuff, be sure and check that one out. That way you get up to speed on what we've done this far. But real quick, some bullet points. We removed the factory K-member, factory suspension, as well as prepared the Godzilla aftermarket K-member and the 4R70W transmission. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be lowering the car down onto the engine, K-member and transmission assembly. And I'm just gonna go ahead and clear the air. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of trial. There's gonna be a lot of air, okay? Parts gonna go on, parts are gonna come off and everything in between. I mean, after all, that's the nature of the beast with this type of stuff. And the beauty of it is we're gonna bring you guys along for the ride. So stay tuned, a lot of good stuff coming. Let's roll it. Okay, so what we're doing right now, uh, Hubbard's trying to formulate a plan on how we can keep this entire assembly uh, straight or as parallel as we can so we can get it over here underneath the car. That way we can drop the car back down out. All right, people, here's what we got. We got us some two by sixes supporting front of the transmission pan. We also have another two by six underneath the dowels are the provisions for the steering rack bushings. Uh, this is on a pretty hefty cart. And we also took our ratchet strap and strapped it underneath the upper deck of this cart. So. We're about to pull the cherry picker and uh, roll this underneath the car. All right, I almost forgot. 4R70W, it's bolted to the engine. Uh, this is our mock-up stand. Uh, what we gotta do real quick, we have to put a transmission cross number on this thing. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that real quick. All right, what do, we, what, do we, what do we got here? So there's our transmission mount. There's our cross member. Oh. And this cross member is actually for a T5 AOD application, correct? But being that that's a, this is a 4R70W, um, this is a different cross it'll, member. It'll bolt right up. Got our mount going into place here. Maybe 18. Four quarters. Four quarters, yeah. Alright, so before we drop the car over our engine and transmission, uh, Hubbard and I are bolting up the transmission mount and the cross member. Yellow zinc that adds to our our silver black theme here and uh, hammer tone. Bushings going in, maybe. Maybe slide for adjustability. Okay, so we were getting ready. I mean, doing some final inspections uh, before we drop the car down on our uh, engine and transmission assembly. And we noticed we've got some boogered up, damaged transmission cross member plates. That one's all right, but it's got a little dent here on the rearward side. So uh, what do we got here, Hubbard? Those are our replacement pieces. So that's gonna require us to drill out all the spot welds, clean up all this area, get it prepped for uh, to be welded into place. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. Okay, so we've used our transmission mount repair kit that we have on the site. We just got it tacked into place. A little more work to do on that one, but uh, for what we have right now, uh, this will easily hold our transmission. Uh, the other side, we'll probably just massage it back into place as it only just has a little hickey right here. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll get the engine transmission assembly, we'll position it underneath the car, and uh, we'll get rolling. Okay. All right, that's going on, bro. Dang it. Got the slider on back. Oh, I only got steering wheels on one end. <laughs> I know I hate carts like that. Forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. <laughs> well, it's in position. So we'll know shortly if we have firewall clearance with the factory manifolds. Whenever we lower the car. We gotta come forward just a little bit. Okay. Uh, I guess 
Yeah. Uh, we use that for reference to line our cam member hole in the frame rail to our hole in the cam member. All right, Hubbard, come on down. Well, amongst our excitement, like many things, uh, we forgot to pull our factory hoist brackets. So we'll probably just leave the front one on. It's not interfering with anything, but as we were lowering this car down over the engine, uh, we did notice that this bracket was going to interfere with that section of the firewall. Because if these bolts out, get that bracket off. I think that's a 17. Uh, possibly, maybe 18. Oh yeah. I know I always like to challenge myself too, see if I can guess the, guess the socket. Now we should be ready. And then what we've done as well, pull the dipstick out of the tube, catch it so, you know, no debris or anything like that. Gets down in there and we've just scooted the engine just a little bit uh, to the driver's side so we could clear the framework. All right, Hubbard, come on down. Disappearing. All right, let's check this. Uh, we're good back here, Hubbard. We're good on this side. Oh, wow. Okay, our brake booster that we put in there, right? Just to see if it would work. That's not gonna work. Not gonna work. No. All right, folks, so uh, we've got the car lowered enough. The underside of the frame rail to the top of the cave member, it's about six to seven inches, give or take, away from each other. So if we come back up here, we go to the engine bay, installing a 93 Cobra booster in the car. Of course, because we wanted to see if that would clear, and no, it won't clear. You see how close it is uh, to that ignition coil back there. I mean, we're talking quarter inch. So yeah, that definitely has to come out. So we're gonna take that out of the car. We'll probably just leave, uh, we probably won't even put a hydro boost assembly back in the car. We'll just leave it open uh, for now, just to get the engine set in. And then uh, as time goes on, uh, you know, we'll see where we're at on that. Yeah, look at that. All right, so change of plans. I said we weren't gonna put anything back in it. We are. Uh, we put the hydro boost assembly back in it. We're hitting our steering shaft back there. What part did it hit? The valve cover? Yes, it's the corner of the valve cover back there, lower section. So we have to come forward, go around it, and get underneath it. Yes. Do that once oh. it passes. Oh. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's barely making contact. We'll we got plenty of room forward, right? Yeah, we have plenty of room for you. Are right. So that's it. Are we clear it? Okay. Yeah, we're good on this side. We're good down here. Hop up there and take a look at the firewall. Oh wow, we it's a we got all the room back there. Okay. That's looking good in there. Throttle body, cut the hood. Uh -huh. All right, we've made progress. We're coming on down. Our gap is shrinking between our K member and our frame rail. We're gonna slide a bolt up into place. Oh, hold on. Hold on, Hubbard, remember that bolt fell out? Okay, I got it back in there. Got it started. Okay. Got the last bolt. Uh, do you want to okay, remember? Back. Back yeah, we can. Oh, we don't have enough plate on there. Oh, man. No nut plate. But in order for us to go from here, we're gonna have to find us a uh, cross member. Okay, so what we've noticed, uh, just real quick, uh, we're pretty much at max adjustment on both of our tubes and as well, of our, as well as our center slots here on our cross member with our transmission mount. So uh, what we'll probably have to do, we'll probably have to switch mounts, uh, get something with some more adjustability. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pop this one off. We'll go ahead and do that right now. Put these young knees to work down here, Hubbard. Hell yeah. Okay, so instead of fighting uh, with a cross member, of course, you know, this is mock-up, evaluation, inspection, however you want to word it. Uh, so what we've done, block of wood uh, with the chain here uh, through the tunnel. And that is around the tail shaft of the transmission. So that'll hold this section uh, where we need it to and basically simulate uh, your cross member. So at this point, uh, we'll do some final checks and then uh, unstrap our cart. Okay. All right, Hubbard. Oh, 
but no space for a steering shaft with that exhaust manifold over there. So you can see where the hole in the sill is for the steering shaft. It's gonna come out and it's gonna immediately make contact with a factory manifold. But if you're running the manifolds pointed forward in the turbo, then it's good. Yeah, so every, every Godzilla swap requires tur turbo. Rear flange here almost makes contact with the firewall, so but given the circumstance of engine swaps, uh, more than likely, you know, an, an aftermarket okay. header will okay. be available. I'd also like to point out, I've uh, talked about this uh, earlier in the, in the video, looking at a factory box body sway bar bracket. These have been cut off. This Again, this is an art research and development car, so we cut these off in development. Our SN95 style Coyote Swap uh, relocation kit for the sway bar, which is, of course, who we market it to. But in a sense, for this application, um, given our area here, uh, for the lower section of the bar, uh, sway bar relocation, if, of course, you're going to be running a sway bar. Uh, oh, Hubbard, you're reading my mind. You are reading my mind. The factory bracket, the bar would be right here where the compressor is at. So that gives you your space. There's clearance here underneath the oil pan. And this is an SN95 sway bar. Uh, specifically, this is off a 95 Cobra R. Uh, those are our reproduction. SN95 style sway bar mounts uh, in conjunction with our relocation. That's definitely something that's that's gonna work, possibly. You're hitting this road over there. No, we're hitting the oil pan right here. See, rotor's, rotor's clear. So, hitting the oil pan. And so maybe not. Well, lots to consider. Now you're, now you're shimming that a little bit. Yeah, pushing that down away, away from the frame rail. Definitely all evaluation at this point, still very early uh, oh, further down is in the, the swap than the rest of the bottom of the car. Golly. Look how far it hangs in relation to that transmission pan. That's your speed bump feeling. Yeah. All right, folks, uh, Hubbard and I, we've been working hard. Uh, we've done a few things off camera, uh, but I'm gonna spin you around and get you up to speed on uh, where we're at right now in our Godzilla mock-up. So uh, what we've done, we have utilized the factory front lower control arm. They are installed into our Team's EK member. Uh, we did have to widen uh, the tabs or we did have to widen the provisions just a little bit to get those in there. Uh, and it, it kind of fought us a little bit, uh, but of course being able to work off a lift, it makes it a little bit easier. We did use a spring perch. You can see that tucked up inside there. Lowering spring, we've got a sway bar mocked up as well. This is using our uh, Coyote Swap sway bar relocation kit. What it does is it removes the factory Fox sway bar bracket and basically converts it to like an SN95 style. This is our bracket, this is our kit, and the bar that is on the car is actually off of a 95 Cobra R. So uh, theoretically, we can call it, you know, SN95 sway bar. Uh, check it out, we've got a power steering pump on there. Uh, no pulley, they didn't have one, of course, you know, as, as the evaluation uh, progresses or goes on you know that's something you know we may add back in or add back onto that power steering pump inspect and evaluate it and we are also going to put an AC compressor up there for you guys uh, for reference we'll get the car back down and uh, get an engine bay view but uh, here is uh, one of our AC hoses uh, coming from our compressor I mean if you're looking under here it's gonna need exhaust there's really no way uh, to make these factory exhaust manifolds work so you'll need as the aftermarket or as the as the time goes on and people produce and manufacture parts, uh, we'll probably definitely see some sort of uh, shorty head or long tube head or mid length, whatever the case may be. Uh, we'll probably see those come down uh, the pipeline. So that's pretty much the underside of the car. Like I said, we'll get it lowered down, uh, give you kind of an overview of, of what the top side looks like. All right, so here's the top side. There was the Hydro Boost assembly I was referencing. Uh, there's definitely some clearance there. So if you want power steering, power assist brakes, with the Godzilla, you'll definitely have to run 9604 hydro boost. Trickle over here, just some mock-up hoses, uh, just for reference, manifold attachment, and then here's our AC accumulator uh, for mock-up as well. I don't know if you guys can see down there, uh, with the heat shield on that factory manifold, very, very close uh, to that frame rail. Uh, still clears on this side, uh, but that upward bolt hole there towards the back, uh, there's no, because of the angle, there's no room uh, to get a stud or bolt through there to connect to mid-pipe. So again, you're definitely gonna have to have um, an aftermarket header 
and then way back down in there on the driver's side, <laughs> the steering shaft, wherever it comes through the firewall, through its seal, it runs right smack dab into that manifold. So again, definitely gonna have to have some sort of better solution. All right, people, we're gonna wrap this up. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed tinkering, showing everyone, you know, where the current status of a Godzilla and a Fox body Mustang. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it's still very, very early. A lot of stuff to do to, to make this swap happen. And if we think about it, the Coyote swap or the Coyote engine in general, at the time of this video, it's been out 11 years. So, you know, it's had well over a decade uh, to develop a following for aftermarket companies in the entire industry, you know, to support the swap. And, you know, hopefully that's the case uh, for the Godzilla. Hey, what's up everybody? Landon with LMR.com and welcome to the third installment for our Godzilla series and a Fox body Mustang. If you have yet to see part one or part two, go check those out. In those videos, really what we do, uh, we bring you along for the ride and just kind of showed you what was involved at that particular time. Part one released last year, 2021. Part two released early this year, 2022 in January. Where we're at currently, we've done quite a bit of stuff, I guess you could say. Originally, really didn't say what we were doing, really didn't commit to making the thing run. Well, guess what? We're gonna commit to making the thing run. And in this particular video, we're gonna give you a rundown of all the components we've sourced thus far. And then at the very end, uh, we got a little surprise for you, so you won't wanna miss it. All right, so with the car on the lift, uh, we'll go ahead and start uh, up top and then we'll work our way underneath. That'd just be the easiest way to do it and explain kind of the components we've sourced, all the specialty stuff, kind of the expensive stuff we had to get, some of the odds and ends, just nature of the beast when doing engine swaps. So uh, we'll flip you guys around and we'll get right into it. All right, so here in the engine bay, uh, we'll start over here on the uh, passenger side. Uh, we've got a simple battery solution, negative, positive, we got all those uh, going to our solenoid. Probably wondering what this little guy here is. This is just a makeshift oil pressure gauge. That way we can monitor oil pressure. Run over to the alternator. Uh, this is just an alternator off of a newer F-250. Comes equipped with a Godzilla engine. Uh, so real simple setup here. Really all we're turning accessory drive wise is a water pump and the alternator. Nothing else on the accessory drive. So we should see little uptick since we're freeing up some power and torque with not having as many front engine accessory drive components. Got a simple upper radiator hose uh, down there. There's our lower radiator hose. We'll show another shot of that uh, when we go underneath the car. Up over here, passenger rear corner. This is our regulator for our fuel system. Inlet from tank. This is outlet to fuel rail, uh, which goes right here. Uh, this line here, that's the crossover uh, for the other rail in factory configuration. The Godzilla engine is a returnless fuel system. So we are converted to a return style fuel system. And then this line right here, uh, that's going to the rear of the tank. Uh, this is our SVE fuel system we've modified to work for a Godzilla and really all we changed, uh, we changed the length of hose and we added a 90 degree fitting to the fuel rail. So up over here in the driver rear corner, uh, you can see the master cylinder, you can see the brake lines uh, that we have bent. This is just a uh, simple manual brake setup. Again, we wanted to keep this swap as clean and as simple minded as possible just so we could get it running. And that is why you see manual brakes. So with the manual brakes, we also have manual steering, which we'll touch base on uh, whenever we go underneath the car. Flip you around here, SVE radiator, our SVE contour fans, uh, they're already wired up and these are triggered off of our control pack which is right over here. Now this is not the permanent mounting spot for the control pack, obviously. I mean, it's just sitting on a piece of foam in the uh, driver's side fender apron, frame rail area. But this control pack here, this is from OBR Control Systems. Ollie is a gentleman that uh, operates that outfit and he does a phenomenal job. He is extremely knowledgeable. And whenever I reached out to him from the very get-go, he was very anxious to help us and wanted us to use his control system for our swap. You know, whenever I told him what was going on, what we were doing, he was like, Landon, I've got to send you this. It's great. Uh, it, it is. Uh, Ollie really, I mean, guys, it's an understatement. You got to have one in your hand so you could really understand how nice it is. But it gives you a pre-loomed and pre-labeled wiring harness. That way you know where all of your connections are. Now, at the time of this video, the, the only control pack for a Godzilla, kind of pricey, but I mean, y'all know the old saying, you got to pay to play. Uh, no doubt about it. This harness you see here, uh, that's for our quick shift uh, transmission controller. He gives you the ECU. He gives you all the necessary uh, smaller components uh, to make it work as well, such as oxygen sensors, coolant port block offs for the engine block. I'll show you where those guys are located as well. You got one kind of tucked right in here. Um, you can kind of see his logo on it. I'll point to it. There it is. OBR control systems. The other one is underneath on the side of the block and we'll show you that in just a second. And then there is his uh, map sensor. And the last thing up front, this is just a simple Ford original transmission cooler for a different application that we had laying here in the shop. That's just the way some of this stuff works. You just find something that may look like it's going to work. You put it in and you notice, oh, heck, look at there. You know, we can use this. Just a transmission cooler mounted up to the crash bar support. Go ahead and go up with it. 
First things first, we'll start with the oil pan. Uh, this is a really, really trick piece. Phenomenal piece of craftsmanship. Uh, this oil pan here is from a company called 417 Motorsports. And when we reached out currently, they have two options that you can opt for whenever you purchase the pan. Basically, you can get it with an O-ring type seal or a factory type RTV sealing surface. We opted for the O-ring. I feel like most of y'all want this pan, what you're gonna go with, just because if you had to take the pan off, put it back on for whatever reason, you don't wanna have to deal with scraping RTV all the gosh darn time. This is a really, really nice piece. They give you all the socket head fasteners. They give you fittings. And this particular pan is about five and seven, eight inches deep all the way to the bottom. And that's gonna save us almost three inches from the stock pan. That doesn't sound like a lot, but if we take a step back here, I mean, the bottom of the pan now, you know, it's not the lowest part of the car. You know, it's not a what we were calling a, uh, a speed bump feeler like it was before. So uh, nice piece. Uh, it does omit the variable oil pump setup. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to source fittings and hose and then run a remote style oil filter. Real simple setup. Don't overthink it. Exits to the driver's side. Comes back passenger side and just a generic oil filter relocation setup. And again, there's our sender for the oil pressure sending unit. And for those of you that may be wondering, well, what about the variable oil pressure? What is it gonna do? Being that the connector's unplugged, by default, uh, the system is designed to just run max pressure at any given speed. Pretty simple setup. So right here, we have a manual steering rack that we had to use offset bushings uh, just so we could clear the oil pan right there you see it did rub a little bit it did make contact so that's why you see that white paint pin we did have to clearance the steering rack housing just a little bit to not compromise the housing and the tube uh, that's inserted into that housing and then while we're on topic of all this good stuff there is that other coolant block off from ollie right there on the driver's side of the engine block nestled in here in between the headers this is a maximum motorsports solid steering shaft Really nice piece. Those have been available forever. Uh, we absolutely love these things. They're a great piece, like several other Maximum Motorsports stuff. So, probably wondering, man, what about the headers? Wh whose are those? Where do I get them? These long tube headers are from Ultimate Headers. They sell very, very nice quality pieces. The stainless that they source is second to none. The welds are top-notch quality. This is their Godzilla swap header for a Fox Body Mustang in conjunction with a Team Z K member. Whenever we were doing this and we committed to the swap, we thought we were going to have to build our own set of headers. Well, we went that route. We had bought just a basic set of headers for a Fox Body Mustang for a different engine application. We were cutting, we were bending, we were heating, we were re-welding, and we got a ton of time in a set of headers. Ultimate Headers just so happened to reach out to us and say, hey, I've got this new header do y'all want to sell it we're like well what is it for and he said oh, a godzilla engine and a fox body mustang with a team zk member we're like man you're answering our prayers here send us a set yes we need some just so happens uh during all this fun stuff we knew the aftermarket was gonna, gonna jump on board and like we said in part one and two the headers at the time was one of the biggest pieces to this godzilla puzzle in a fox mustang the only thing we had to do we got to figure out a mid pipe for it which i mean it's going to be pretty simple compared to what we've had to chase thus far there's a lower radiator hose like I was mentioning, water pump. There's our relays for our contour fans. And then right here, that's a strange strut with coilover kit. Previously in part one and two, y'all saw just a SVE lowering spring with a factory style control arm again. That was just for mock-up purposes. We knew that was going to change whenever we committed to making this thing run. We'll spin you around here to the transmission area. Stifler's cross member uh, holding up our 6R80. I know, I know, don't, don't beat us up too much. Well, automatic, it takes all the fun out of it. You know, that's space monkey stuff. Well, yes and no whatever it, whatever floats your dang boat you know we were going to put a manual transmission in but then we thought let's put an automatic in let's just get a 6r80 out of a junkyard and this one is out of a junkyard it's out of a 2012 f-150 two-wheel drive got 90 something thousand miles we paid around a thousand bucks for it a little less whatever at the time of this video uh, pretty good deal for it considering and when we take it to the drag strip it is going to omit a lot of driver error and we'll get a little bit truer results, I guess you could say. So yeah, you're probably gonna say, well, y'all can't drive a car, eh, whatever. So on the passenger side over here, uh, tucked in behind that header, you can see a uh, starter that is just for, you know, a mod motor. And that bolted up right to the Godzilla engine block. Uh, so here's our fuel lines. Again, this is pretty, pretty to the point. We just follow the factory lines right into the back of the tank. And to control the 6R80, we're going to be using US Shift Quick 6 controller. I will show that in just a second. That's a nice piece. That's pretty much, I guess you could say, quote unquote, the standard that everybody has used thus far on standalone transmission controls for the 6R80. Uh, so we'll show you that device uh, real quick. All right, so we'll bring the car back down. I uh, will show you that Quick Shift 6 controller. But here it is. It's just 
chilling. But there's a lot of information on this. Y'all can check it out on our website, read about it. Um, like I said, this is kind of the go-to or the standard for uh, standalone 6R80 controls. A lot of great feedback on this unit and uh, we're excited to uh, be putting it in this car. There's some of the wiring, harnesses and pigtails, terminal ends for the Quick Shift 6 controller. Uh, we still got to wire all that good stuff up. None of the dash or anything was in this car. Like I said, it's just been kind of a car that we've had around here just for mock-up purposes and stuff like that. So Hubbard's just temporarily mounted an ignition switch with the stuff we need to make the car run. And for this application, that's all we're going to need. And then over there, you can see the pedal assembly for the manual brakes. As far as the interior is concerned, we're not going to go into too much detail. I mean, we'll make it look like a car, put a dash back in it, and we've painted it black. Primary focus of this series is pretty much all things Godzilla. All right, people, so that's a rundown of uh, all the components and stuff we've sourced thus far, everything we've done. A Hubbard's a mastermind at this stuff. You turn him loose, and uh, he just makes it happen. Like I said in the earlier part of the video, we got a little surprise for you, so let's go ahead and get to that surprise. people so that's going to do it for part three we've covered a lot of stuff uh in the past few months and uh for part four we're going to drive the car uh we'll do a big smoky all that fun cool stuff you know there's still a lot of work to do granted you know there's no ac there's no power steering uh all that can come in time you just got to do that you just got to make it happen hey what's up people landing with lmr.com and uh welcome to episode four of our godzilla swap series into our 1992 calypso green hatchback box body that uh we've dubbed green goblin it's been a while since we've seen you since episode three uh, that was around late may of uh, this year 2022 here we are with episode four late october early november time frame sorry it's taking us this, this long to get back to you trust me I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do around here amid all of our time on uh, putting a Godzilla into a Fox Body Mustang. If you haven't seen parts one, two, and three, I'll definitely go check those out. They're going to get you up to speed and lead you all the way into where we're at currently in episode four. Started the car for the first time, it runs and idles. I said we were going to try to do a burnout, drive the car, stuff like that. We have driven the car, but we still have to do a little fine tuning to the calibration. So uh, no burnout just yet, but I promise you guys, whenever we get it all sorted, we will get a burnout going, get it on the dyno, weigh it, and of course, take it to the track. Up until this point, Scott Hubbard and Cameron Brady, they've done a lot of work on this car. They finished the car and for, for what it is, it looks really, really good. So I know this focus was, you know, Godzilla, Godzilla, Godzilla. In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about Godzilla first, and then uh, we're gonna pretty much run you through the entire car, talk about the exterior, the interior, the driveline, wheels, brakes, all that good stuff. And I know you are gonna find a lot of value in uh, what we're gonna show you today. Uh, so let's get right into it. All right, people, so here's the engine bay. Here's where it sits. We got an intake system on it, cold air kit. Hubbard threw this together probably about an hour, two hours one day. Uh, we were getting getting ready to take it to our cruise in there at Texas Motor Speedway. And uh, we we're like, man, we gotta finish this thing off because if y'all knew previously, uh, basically, we had the throttle body still attached to the intake manifold, and it was just pointing straight up, and uh, really didn't look that good. Plus, we were going to try to get a hood on it. We wanted the stock hood, but this is the the Cervini cow hood. We'll close that down here in just a second and uh, show you all a shot of that. That one looks really good. But anyways, it does clear this particular hood, and we just had some rubber elbows, piping, and all that good stuff laying around here in the shop for Hubbard to build a uh, pretty pretty neat little cold air kit. Now, since we've put our cold air kit over here, you may notice we moved the battery back over to the driver's side of the engine bay. This is correct for 86. 93 fuel injected applications. Also have the coil cover there as well with factory style solenoid tucked underneath there. Again, previously that was over there on the passenger side. But as we were doing all this, we were getting all together. We were trying to chase uh, as many factory attributes as we could and the battery was one of those. You may notice the factory crossover is gone over the intake manifold for fuel delivery. Gone with a set of Holly billet fuel rails. These are currently available on our site. Got those plumbed up real nice and feeding that is still our SVE fuel system for a Coyote swap uh, that we've easily modified to work with the Godzilla. You may also be noticing, hey man, what the heck, y'all put AC on the car. We sure did. I know in part three, we were just going to make the thing run. We really weren't chasing any amenities or anything like that. We thought, what the heck, we were here. It was still hot outside when we did all this. Put AC on the car. And the cool thing is, this is the one for our Coyote Swap applications, just with a few modifications. Going to bring that to, to market soon. No guarantees, but stay tuned. You may see that. Got the brake plums, typical placement for our proportioning valve, and we'll uh, discuss brakes here in just a second. All right, so when it comes to engine swaps and the parts for the engine swaps, being that all these parts are new, there's still a few compromises that you may have to make. The compromise we had to make back there, cylinder eight, you can see it kind of right past my finger. The primary right there where the steering shaft exits the firewall, Hubbard had to dimple that primary. He also had to move the steering shaft and the column over uh, as far as he could for additional clearance. So one of the compromises that we've had to face with this engine swap, but um, other than that, it's been uh, pretty straightforward. That's the engine bay. 
Uh, now we'll continue working our way around the car. Up front here, got the bumper put back on permanently. Those are a brand new set of headlights from our website. Uh, we also had to put a headlight harness in it because this being a donor car, there wasn't a headlight harness. So uh, we got all that wired up. Those work great and they look great against that uh, Calypso Patina front bumper. All right, around the side here, these are our SVE Classic drag wheels uh, in gloss black. Uh, they are five lug. They look really good on the car. Complements the Patina Calypso really well. Yes, we still have a 5.0 emblem on the side of the car because everybody has to have a sleeper, right? But uh, no, we're still trying to figure out what we want to do as uh, far as emblem goes for the time being 5.0 works extremely well tuck behind that front classic drag you'll see the wheelwood drag brake kit pretty much everything i'm talking about here folks uh part related if it's live on the website everything's going to be linked down in the description there's our classic drag front we'll zip over here to the back classic drag in the rear this car was used for the development of our four lug rear disc convert well being that we had a five lug set up for the front on our drag brakes all we did was just easily swap the axle the brake setup is exactly what you would get in a four lug rear disc except it has a five lug axle. All right, well, I'm gonna shut this hood. We'll take a look at that. And then uh, we'll talk a few things about the exterior. This hood, this is the two and a half inch Cervini's hood, cow hood. Uh, it looks really good. Obviously we left ours gray, as you can see. Compliments the Patina Calypso fairly decent. We don't know what we wanna do with this. Uh, obviously it's kind of hard to uh, match Patina, especially with like a fiberglass type hoods. Who knows, we may like take a picture of the paint. We may wrap the hood. You never know what we may do. Starting up front here, this is a brand new car like glass that we had installed by a local glass company. Kind of dirty right now, we just got back from our crews in, but y'all know how good fresh glass makes a vehicle look. And this definitely made the car look really good. But uh, got our all of our moldings resprayed, resprayed as much stuff as we could. If it was still in good condition, we reused it. Obviously, if it was available on our website, lmr.com, we replaced what we could. But uh, painted wiper arms, that is a new cow vent. Y'all know as well as we do, it's kind of hard to reuse a Fox body cow vent grill. Zip it around here, painted mirrors, new roof rails, placement 5 resto run channel trims. We painted the door frames and put new roof rail weather strips in. Outer door belt moldings, weather strips, inner door belts, all brand new, as well as lock cylinders and plastic factory style outer door handles. These are the Scott Drake replacement hatchback quarter windows. They look really good in the car, especially because you get the fresh moldings, all that good stuff. And y'all know, just similar to a lot of other pieces on the Fox body Mustang, quarter windows, regardless of coupe or hatchback, they don't typically hold up. <laughs> so uh, we'll zip it around here at the back. Still an original rear glass. We just borrowed it from another car and resprayed our moldings. Put an LX emblem on it, did not have one, or did not have the Ford emblem. One of the two, but we got the correct emblems on the back of the car also the correct 8793 tail lights and then we'll zip it up in the air here in just a second show y'all the exhaust you can kind of see here that three inch tip exiting the rear of the car it looks really good of the exterior that's what we did you know left the car patina that was the original plan anyway we just wanted to get the engine in the car use it for some development stuff who knows we may just leave the car uh, the way it is because personally i think it looks pretty dang good that's the exterior let's jump into the interior let's take a look inside the goblin here by the way if y'all uh, hadn't caught on it's what we're calling the car the goblin for short i guess it's technical name is Green Goblin, hence Calypso Green. Here's the interior. This is a really nice place to be. Not gonna talk too much about it. The video series has been uh, primarily Godzilla Swap and a Fox Body Mustang, but since we did kind of quote unquote, build the car, finish the car, however you wanna word it, figured it was nice to talk about this. So Corbo seats, Corbo harnesses, maximum motorsport, six point roll bar, crossbar in currently. Again, we just got back from our event, didn't wanna hassle with all that going to and from the event. Plus we were just driving around the parking lot. Fresh door panels armrest pad, you name it, pretty much everything from our website in this car, in the interior, and it's a lot of stuff. Similar to the exterior, we did reuse as many components as we could. Now granted, Fox Body Mustang stuff here, you gotta you gotta replace some things and that's what we did. 93 Cobra style wheel tucked behind that. That's that auto meter Envision digital instrument cluster. I'm gonna zip the key on real quick, let y'all see this boot up. This is pretty sweet. And then that's the uh, gauge layout uh, that we chose. There's uh, four available. Y'all can read more about that part uh, by clicking the link down in the description. Factory style shifter in the car. We also got line lock hooked up, all that good stuff. Console top panel. Okay, so here's the hatch area. Pretty simple, hatch area carpet, kind of flows into a uh, rear seat delete if you must. Basically that's just carpet tucked underneath uh, the floor carpet painted interior rear quarter panels. And then there's a better shot of that maximum roll bar. Looks pretty sweet. You know, we just painted that in gloss black, uh, like roll bar or chassis paint. Passenger side, there's where our quick shift six controller is. Get a little light on the situation here. That way 
Y'all can see where that's mounted. So put that there because we still got to do some tuning on it, make sure it's shifting, you know, in all the right spots. A little piece of hook and loop or Velcro and stuck it to the side of the uh, dash frame. Well, that's interior, exterior, the engine bay portion for where we're currently at. So now let's get the car up, uh, run you down underneath. All right, so underneath our uh, Godzilla swap car, things to make it right. A few components, but most of the stuff was just kind of finish out thing. Exhaust, drive shaft, we did some stuff that back there in the rear axle area suspension. Uh, but starting up front, we got our, you know, our inner fender splash shields, Team Z control arms. We got a bump steer kit on it. Strange front struts with coilovers. There's the AC compressor that I was talking to y'all about earlier and the AC system. Connecting to our ultimate headers, long tube headers, is a custom exhaust by a local muffler shop here to uh, Waco, Texas called Waco Muffler and Performance. These guys really knocked it out of the park uh, on this custom exhaust. We utilize an H pipe for the system. We've got like a factory style sleeve here connecting the mid pipe to the header. It does have high flow catalytic converters. We have V-band connections on our mufflers. Uh, these mufflers are the Jones Bore muffler that we sell on our website. Combined with the catalytic converters, it's got a really good exhaust note. And then connecting to the mufflers, uh, we've got some three inch tailpipes connect there, simple to clamp. Waco area, close to the Waco area, you need to trust somebody with some really good exhaust work. Again, Waco muffler and performance. All right, so at the rear here, got a Team Z drag spring, Team Z lower control arm with a spherical front bushing. That's a strange rear shock. We have a 31 spline diff with 327 rear gears. That's the Team Z upper control arm setup. Uh, this reclocks the uh, rear geometry. Got a pretty neat little crossover bar there at the top. You can kind of see it right through this bracket and the rear axle there, the pumpkin. But anyway, this piece here, like I said, it reclocks the geometry. You've got solid spherical bushings, basically helps with instant center. You can dial in your pinion angle, just drag race and stuff. And that is a custom fabricated drive shaft by Scott Hubbard. One of his many pieces he had laying around in his shop, he cut it down, uh, welded it back up. We had it balanced just because, yeah, we could have had an aluminum one made. The wait time for an aluminum drive shaft was just out of this world. So why not just make your own if you have all this cool stuff available to make it? So the subframe connectors, got to have those on a Fox body. Uh, SN95 Mustang for sure. Drive shaft safety loop, got that installed as well. We talked about this in episode three, Stiffler's cross member with our 6R80 transmission. Got all the linkages set up, dialed in. Got the transmission cooler all finished up. And then, uh, like I said, the quick shift six is controlling that. Talked about our fuel system in episode three. Uh, again, nothing really changed there except for at the engine bay where we added the Holly fuel rails. Other than that, we got all of our brake stuff situated back here. Fuel tank covers on the car, nice and OEM looking. Uh, those uh, Willwood brakes, uh, the rotor and the caliper. That's a really nice kit for drag race and stuff. Really a lot of finish out stuff. You know, we got some heat tape isolated throughout some of the uh, hoses and things just to protect those. So that's the uh, undercarriage. We'll get it back down and close this one out. All right, people, so that's gonna do it for episode four. Like any of the episodes, hope you found a lot of value. There wasn't a lot of uh, Godzilla swap specifics, but I do believe that y'all found a lot of value in us showing you that we finished the car. It's registered, it's inspected. You know, we can drive it on the street. For episode five, when we come back, we're gonna weigh the car, we're gonna dyno the car, and uh, we're gonna take it to the track. Uh, sorry we didn't get to a big smoky this go around. Uh, we have driven the car around the parking lot. We're still working out a few uh, calibration related issues with it. And uh, once we get all that sorted, we'll be able to turn it up. Until then, we'll have uh, some isolated videos come through once we get to episode five, like a uh, video pertaining to just the exhaust, dyno, and uh, all that good stuff. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Landon with LMR.com, and it's episode five, Godzilla Swap in a Fox Body Mustang. And we've kind of dubbed the car Green Goblin. From part four, where we left off, we kind of finalized it there. You know, still needed to figure out a little bit of stuff in the calibration. All that has been sorted. We're good to go. We're ready to turn it up, put it on the dyno, get some weight, and then uh, head to the track. That's what we're going to do today. I have it sitting here on our four post lift. Uh, we'll get it up in the air. We'll get it strapped down and uh, we'll turn the rollers. But uh, before we do turn the rollers, we're going to do some tinkering. We'll make a run with the way the car sits, a little homemade cold air kit hooked up. Then we'll take the cold air kit off, make a run. And then uh, just because of the uh, inside of the engine, kind of some old school trickery here, disconnect the mid pipe and run open headers and see if any horsepower or torque increase uh, by doing that little trick. Flip you around in the engine bay give you one good updated shot of uh, where it sits. There's our, you know, homemade cold air kit. It serves a really good purpose for what we need. There's our nice, cool little trick. Throttle body adapter. That way we can run the two and a half inch Cervini's cow hood. And then I'm gonna go ahead and clear the air too. Whatever we do disconnect our homemade cold air kit. If you're in the stage lane of the track, you're gonna get some hot air off the radiator and it's gonna be pulling some of that hot air into the engine. So before we get rolling, uh, the car does have Ollie's calibration from OBR control systems. 
speeds. We didn't really make any tweaks or adjustments to the calibration. Kind of early on, we thought it may have needed some adjustments, but it didn't. Of course, we have 93 octane fuel in the tank and all of our pulls are gonna be made in fourth gear, uh, which isn't truly one-to-one -one with the 6R80 transmission, but it's as close as we can get. Well, enough of me talking. Uh, let's go ahead and make the first pull in stock trim, cold air kit hooked up and the exhaust hooked up. So here's our results. In stock trim, well, I say stock trim, kind of a, a crate engine Godzilla without any cylinder head work, aftermarket camshaft, aftermarket intake manifold. Y'all know what I mean. 409 horsepower at 5,100 RPM, 477 pound-feet of torque. Uh, that's not too bad, that's strong, because the Godzilla crate engine is rated at 430 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque at the flywheel. So very small amount of horsepower loss, and the car is actually making two pound-feet more torque to the tire than it's rated at the flywheel. That's kind of neat. All right, folks, that's run number one. We're gonna unhook the uh, cold air kit and make another hit. All right, so uh, kind of to be expected, we were thinking that there was probably a little bit of power on the table there with our homemade cold air kit. Looks like it proves to be that way. Uh, but with the cold air kit unhooked, 418 horsepower at the same RPM, 5100, and then uh, just a small bump in uh, torque, 478.6 pound-feet of torque at 4000 RPM. Not saying that our cold air kit was put on there to make power. We put it on there so it kind of gave it a more complete look because we like to tinker and we like to do, so that's why we did it. But man, I'm gonna flip y'all back around look past 4500 rpm it starts to uh you know come to live you know as you as you start turning turning some rpm so uh, that's pretty neat to see in case you're wondering this little little blip down here that's just some weird erratic feedback uh from the pickup whenever i stop the run or apply the brake to the drum on the dyno all right people so that's run two we'll disconnect the mid pipe back and then we'll run open headers and see what we get So we just made a pull with open headers. It sounds damn good. I mean, rightfully so, right? But in case you're wondering, I mentioned the exhaust in episode four. It's full three inch all the way back. Uh, we have high flow catalytic converters and Jones full bore mufflers. These results are pretty neat to see. No cold air, open headers, 416.5 horsepower at 5,100 RPM. So that's awesome to see the consistency there where it's making peak power. Our torque, I saw a little bit of bump at peak, 479.7 pound feet of torque at 3,900 RPM. But what I want y'all to pay attention to is down here at about 20, 2500 to about 3500 your green line that you're looking at that is the run with no cold air and open headers look at the drop in the curve and torque or what that's from is a limited back pressure and you know, the, the scavenging aspect of the exhaust is no longer present so you see that drop in torque in the lower torque curve and also what's cool to note is catalytic converters the three inch exhaust and the jones full bull rufflers really isn't robbing any power so the, that's some cool data to, to know as well all right people so that's our three runs uh that's kind of what we were going for we wanted to just do a uh, quote unquote stock hit if you must. Uh, we wanted to pull the cold air kit off just to see if there was some power on the table from that. There was. And then uh, just kind of the old school trick of the trade of, you know, some of the big block stuff. Disconnect the exhaust and see if there's any power to be had there. To our knowledge, uh, there wasn't. Uh, there was that little bit of jump and torque there at peak, but curve gains down low, you know, it, would, it actually hurt the car disconnecting the exhaust. So, all right, so that's gonna complete the dyno stuff uh, for part five. I'm gonna get it uh, get it off our four post lift here and we'll get it on the scales and get some weight. Uh, got the car off the dyno. Uh, went ahead and loaded it onto our wireless Proform scales. We're gonna get the weight of the car. And kind of as it sits, I mean, y'all have seen it progress through the series. Uh, I would categorize this as a really good street strip car. We put interior back in it. No, it doesn't have a back seat. It has lightweight race seats, tubular K-member. It does have AC, fiberglass hood. Of course, this is all how each individual sees it, but to me, this kind of falls 
falls in line of a really good street strip car. We do have a full tank of gas in it, and uh, if you do the math, crunch the numbers, a gallon of gas weighs about six pounds, it's about 90 pounds, give or take. If y'all want to, we all have calculators, you know, y'all can add, subtract, do whatever you want to do. Got it on the scales. Uh, we'll take a look at our LCD screen. We let the car sit on the scales for about three to five minutes, and then even with that, it did kind of creep up a little bit, you know, per pound, but hey, we're splitting hairs at that point. This car didn't have to meet any weight requirements or anything like that, and it came in about 3190, 3191. You might as well go ahead and round that up to 3200 pounds. Considering what all the car has, even with that, you know, big 7.3 liter Godzilla engine, you know, it's an iron block, aluminum heads, composite intake manifold, 3200 pounds isn't too bad. So there you go, folks. We got some good data going so far. Uh, we got some good dyno numbers. We got some weight. So the next time we see you, we'll be at the track. All right, people, so we made it to the drag strip. You just saw the dyno run. You just saw us weigh the car. So uh, basically we're gonna see what the car runs now. We know the horsepower, the torque, and uh, how much the car weighs. It does weigh 3,200 pounds, as you saw. Uh, Scott Hubbard's gonna be the one driving the car today. He weighs about 200 pounds. So uh, race weight, we're gonna call it 3,400 pounds. I'd like to point out, uh, this is a stock truck engine. Got it from our website and it's a Ford Performance branded engine. It's conservative tuned. It has a 327 rear gear. Got a pretty good day today, 1600 DA. See how many passes we can make. Show you guys a few, and then uh, we'll talk about our, our times uh, here in just a moment. people let's go ahead and check out some results uh, but before we do we ran this car 18 times pretty impressive uh, Scott Hubbard primarily is the one that built this car we had a lot of hands to help build the car but he was uh, the one that primarily uh, turned most of the wrenches on this thing so uh, hats off to him for building one hell of a car uh, several 11 second passes several consistent passes uh, we played around with it a little bit throughout the day you know we messed with our transmission controller the quick shift six Mike here at the track helped us uh, help us set some tire pressure but at the end of the day uh, with all those passes those 18 passes I would say that kind of got it where we wanted in terms of, uh, I guess, our virgin or maiden voyage here to the track. Did 1117 at 120.22 miles an hour, and it cut a 16460 foot. And uh, with anything, you know, more track time, more seat time, you know, the, the name of the game is, you know, hopefully to get faster. So uh, that's what we're going to do. You know, we're going to play around with it as of now. You know, that's going to conclude the Godzilla series. I know we're not going to stop there, so y'all always stay tuned with uh, what we have. And then I'd also like to uh, give a shout out to uh, Little River Dragway for having us out on this great afternoon. Open up the facility for us and uh, let us, you know, run the Goblin. We had a really good time, so uh, thanks to those guys. That's all we have for you today. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Remember to uh, like the video, subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications. Until we catch you next, we got to do for all things Fox Body Mustang. Keep it right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR. Bye.